Okay, people, here we go. We start out with the surface blur exercise, and I'm just going to show you a picture of the finished result. Uh, I'll just go to Finder. Finder, where are you? Disturb. And let's see. My Photoshop Block 2 retouch. Uh, oh, I could just open it in Bridge, but. Uh, because I actually placed my finished file in here. And you can see, okay, so if I just put them up next to each other, I'm just going to arrange them two up vertically, and you'll see this was before, this is after. So we're trying to get a doll-like impression on her face, and I'll just show you how that works. Okay, first off, we're going to make a new layer because we do not want to damage the original layer, so I'm going to click Command J to include an extra layer. This will be the surface blur layer. I'm just going to rename it. You don't have to do that because I don't want to tell you. I don't want to use time in my video to tell how. Okay, so we'll just go to the filter, uh, choose the blur, surface blur, and here we have some different options, radius and threshold. Remember to have the preview switched on. I'm just going to move it to this part of the face. If you put up the radius, it's going to look uh, as if the edges are burned in the transition between darkness and light. So a high radius is not good. A low radius makes it hard to see if there's actually any change to the picture. So we need to have some radius a high threshold is going to make it look very, very blurred, as if you have like glasses that are that need to be <laughs> cleaned. Um, and I'm just gonna try fiddling with these numbers so we get some amount of highlight as well, so we don't lose out on all of our highlights. I'm gonna adjust the threshold value a bit. And I think that's going to give me a great um, impression of doll-like skin without actually losing the feel that this is a human being. So I'm going to click OK. Whatever settings you think is proper for surface blur is up to you. I'm going to switch off the background, uh, toggle off the visibility of the background so I can actually start erasing. I'm going to have surface blur layer selected, the new layer selected, um, and to make a copy of a layer like we did before, it's just a matter of Command J, clicking Command J, that was how to make a new copy of a layer, Command J. If, if you don't understand what the <laughs> I'm saying, you can just right click a layer and choose to make a, make a duplicate of it. Duplicate layer and then click OK, super, then you have even another copy. Okay, I, I switched off the visibility of my background. You need to have surface blur selected. Make sure this is the one highlight in blue, not the background highlight in blue, because then you're going to start painting and doing, doing damage and weird stuff to the background. So surface blur, I'm going to click surface blur layer. I'm going to click on my eraser tool, my eraser tool, which is located over here. And I'm going to just select a bigger size, right click and select a bigger size. Um, and it's probably, yeah, around 150 to 200 pixels on this picture. And set a lower opacity. Then I'll just start erasing away, removing her hair. Do not remove her face, because if you do so, you have lost the entire purpose of actually using surface blur. Why are we deleting the hair? We're trying to not make the hair become blurred. We want her skin to become to become to have a smooth surface, but we do not want her hair to become smoothened out because that will make it seem as if it's shining, shining in some weird oil oily fashion. And we don't want all that oil and grease inside of her hair. And you don't need to go all the way inside of her grains of hair, strains of hair, grain, strain, whatever. 
Whenever I say strain or grain, I always think of Metallica as if the frayed ends of sanity. Okay, so here we have it. That's almost okay. I don't need to use a million years to do this. So I'll just switch on the visibility of the background. You can see now her hair is again not one big blur. There are some more things we need to fix. We need to make sure that her eye is not like losing some of the details because of the surface blur. You notice that compared to the original there is something being lost inside of the eye. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna switch off the visibility of my background again and start erasing. So I'm gonna remove her eye. So we want her eye back, so actually we need to remove it. Because when I switch on the background it will show again in a non-blurred version. So I'm gonna do the same over here. Just make sure to remove that. And actually we also want a lot of detail in her eyelashes so I'm just gonna try removing that without putting too much energy into the level of detail. Don't get her wrinkles around her eyes with would you so just stay inside of the eye not go outside too much. I'm just gonna try just really softly getting some of the detail in her eyelashes. Not too much because you will start getting her wrinkles around the eyes with you. And naturally this uh, this way of retouching a picture is cool in a lot of pictures and is widely accepted when it comes to some fashion magazines, but if it's if you're really looking into making a really great um, retouchment of skin uh, where it does not become too plastic in its look. You can also use high pass, low pass retouchment, but it is uh, it requires some more use of Photoshop for you to get used to that. Um, I'm just gonna also remove parts of the contour area below her nose so her nose does not become blurry uh, in the transition between her nose area and her upper upper lip area. I know that's not her upper lip but the skin above her upper lip. And I'm just going to remove the inside of her lips right here and make the whiteness, the highlights stand out. And, uh, it up here. So I'm not going, I'm actually not going all the way out to the border because you notice here are actually some details of age coming forth. I'll remove that with patch tool or healing brush tool or clone stamp afterwards. So just keep erasing the parts that do not create a bad result. It will create a bad result if you do like this. Do not do that. Perhaps I want the chin to start, stand out a bit. And her eyebrows. I don't want the hair inside her eyebrows to become blurry, so I'm just going to fix that up. And, uh, there we have it. I think that's approximately fine. So let's see. This is now. And I'll go back in history and check what is before. I'll go all the way back to Surface Blur 2 and compare. Okay, so this is before, this is now. I'm just clicking once on the before, the 7 Surface Blur 2, just clicking once there. And then actually, instead of having to go all the way down here again, I could just click Command Set. Command Set, Command Set, Command Set. That's Control Set on a PC. And you can just keep on doing that to compare results. Okay, so some of the highlights are missing now. You could use the History Brush tool to repaint some of them, but repainting them with History Brush tool will create the original texture, meaning she'll get wrinkled again. 
Okay, so here at this point you can you're gonna have to flatten the file. Why is that? Because if you want to lighten areas up, if you want to say like, okay, I want to lighten her eyes with Dutch tool, you cannot do so because if you're trying, okay, I'll try lightening it up. I'm using highlights up here. I'll try lightening up. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. But out here, something happens. You see, something is happening out here. So why is that? Well, actually, if you just switch on the off the visibility of the background, you'll notice you cannot lighten up an area which is not there. So that's why. So I need to flatten this picture, make these two layers become one. And to do so, I'll just uh, make both both of them visible. And then I could choose flatten right here. But don't do so immediately. I'll either want to take a snapshot shot inside of history, a snapshot, just click this camera in here of history. And you'll notice up here by the original history, back to where you opened the picture originally, you'll also have a snapshot. Then you can always return to this state of history, always, because normally you only have 50 states inside of here. You could change that up inside of the preferences of Photoshop, but normally you only have 50 states of history. But you'll have this as an extra state you can always jump back to this point where I'm at now. Another uh, thing to do would be to save the file. You could save the file to remember the state uh, because the snapshot one, if you ever close this picture down, it's going to remove whatever sna snapshots you take. You can take any amount of snapshots. You can take more than one. Okay, so if, if um, I want to go to sleep, I want to close my Photoshop down, then I would not be using snapshots. Then I would just say file, save as, just to be sure that I can always return to my work file. So I'm going to name this one work file, and I'm just going to save that, and it's going to ask me, uh, Chief, no, cancel. We don't want a Chief. It suggested Chief because I, that was the last file I saved in, file format I saved in, and I'm going to choose PSD instead. So, um, work file 01, this is my work file, and it's going to say, you already saved us that name, okay, fuck it, oh, sorry, sorry about the language, uh, save on top of the file I already had, and okay, now we're ready to flatten the picture, so I'm just going to say flatten image, we already have a, a, another copy of this file, and just when it's when it's actually flattened, I'm just going to say file save as again and choose for it to be saved in TIFF just so I don't by mistake click to save and it saves on top of the PSD file I just made. I've done that so many times by accident. This is not going to be called work file. This could actually be called finished because I'm not even though I'm not done. I know that in most most likely five minutes I'm going to be done with this picture. Save, replace, super, duper. Okay. Do not change the TIFF options unless you have been messing around with the TIFF options already. <sighs> okay. So now you can lighten up the eyes as you want. You can just go into them, take the Dutch tool, just lighten them up. I'm choosing highlights. I don't only want the the lightest spots to become even lighter. It's gonna make uh, some more spark inside of her eyes. Gonna just add a bit here as well. Perhaps here in the corner of her eye and perhaps here on her lips. Just don't do it too much because if you keep doing it, it's gonna make her lips look pink. <laughs> uh, remember, low exposure. Okay, so you might as well also just think perhaps we went a bit too far with those lips. I'm just gonna undo a bit more. Okay, so soft. I'm gonna choose midtones and, and I'm just gonna try lighting up her nose a bit, perhaps a bit under under the eyes, just perhaps with an even bigger bigger brush so you don't notice actually where I'm painting. Just gonna make some brightness to her skin so it looks realistic always be checking does it look realistic what i'm doing to the face uh, 
and uh, sometimes it requires a basic knowledge of anatomy to be doing this. Remember, I'm really low exposure while doing this. Perhaps a little bit. I'm just gonna change, lighten it up a bit here. Right around here. Lightening up below the eyes will make the person seem a bit younger as well. Or at least not as tired. <laughs> uh, remember, if you do this too much with Dutch blur, it's gonna look orange in the end. Let's try checking it out. So you see, it starts looking more and more orange. I'm just Luckily, I can just do it. Say undo, 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 undo. Just don't do it 50 times because then you cannot click undo all the way back. Okay, let's see how does this look compared to the original. I'm just going to go all the way back. This was the original. This is the now. Okay, so finally we can just also change with the patch tool, her wrinkles down in her face right here. No pixels were selected. Eh, so she has no more wrinkles in this area. Uh, and right here, you're welcome to try and fix that part out. That's gonna be somewhat more tougher. Requires some different tools. In the process, I'm gonna fix up the worst using patch tool. I'm probably gonna clone from some areas to another. I think you should just really try using the different tools I to told you how to use. I'm not gonna try fixing that up entirely. This could need a bit more of refinement, but you just keep doing what I said that you should do to this picture and you will complete it with perfection. Okay, one last thing. See, if you wanted something to become more like it was originally, you could use the snapshot or the surface blur to use the history of the, this one. Because right here I see that I painted too much color into her eye by using the Dutch tool in this area. So I can just put my history to become snapshot one, not the surface blur original picture. Uh, but the snapshot one, because I know right there that I had used surface blur, but I had not used the Dutch tool. So I'm just gonna use the history brush and start recoloring back how it originally was. And actually this way I can make sure that it is blurred a bit, but also that we don't get the wrinkles from the original picture back making it look much more natural. Yeah, I think that's it. And that was actually your assignment for next Photoshop lesson. Surface blurring a picture in a, in a, in a fashion so that we get a doll-like skin to the picture. Okay, let's check out some adjustments. Let's do this. Inside of Bridge, I'm just opening up the folder called Adjustments. We're just going to take them one by one. I'm trying to do this really quick, a bit faster than I did at school. In some class, I didn't even get to Adjustments. So that's why I'm recording these videos now. But also to be nice. Okay, so levels. Oh, how did he get to levels? Uh, image, adjustments, levels. Yeah, I know some of you are using layer, new adjustment layers, levels. Okay, so that's, you're ahead of time. You're like a pioneer. But let's just start out using the regular adjustments in image adjustment levels. And this picture really needs to be lightened up. So I'm gonna adjust my levels. The white is here, the black is here, the gray tones are here. 
adjust your white to be to the closest mountain. So you see there's no mountain at, at the start. So I'm just gonna adjust my white to be at, at the very least at the point where this mountain starts. Okay, so I see there's a lot of black mountain, evil mountain. So I need to thin that out, so we need more more white and gray mountain. So I'm gonna move the grayish towards the blackish. And you'll see then suddenly parts of his face start reappearing. Oh, you can do this too much. You do not want the darkness to die entirely. You want there to be balance. But there's already so much darkness, so you need so much more lightness. So the gray tone, you slip that over until you feel there's balance and harmony inside of this picture. On almost any picture you take, unless you're really shooting in great lighting conditions or you really know how to adjust your camera, in almost any circumstance you'll need to adjust the levels. Some might though instead adjust the levels inside of curves, but let's just the curves is something located inside of image adjustments, curves. So, but let's just ignore the curves and let's just ignore that there's something called red, green and blue inside the channel right here. And let's ignore that there's something actually called presets in here. You're probably never going to use those presets anyway. Perhaps you are. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. Okay, so adjust the gray tone handle so what you're looking at is not starting to become noisy and bad to look at. You see if I turn it up way high you can see easily that there are some pixels really being dis destroyed right here. There's some some really weird transitions in flesh right here. So I'm just going to move that down a bit. So probably around here and that's the amount that I'll be fixing on this picture. We can look at what was before and what is after. So we really we fixed up so you can actually see the other part of his face. This is not a good picture so I'm just gonna close it down. Not that I'm saying this guy's looking bad or anything like that but this is in general a picture not shot in the best conditions. So I'm just gonna say don't save and I'm just gonna flip to bridge and let's just open this one up. Exposure the picture called exposure that's because I'm going to use image adjustments exposure and inside of here you can choose to adjust the exposure and gamma correction I suggest not adjusting the offset value there are some presets here which are actually okay to use just to check out do I want to uh, decrease the amount of light inside of the picture uh, if the picture was overexposed or do I want to plus add, add lighting to the picture if the exposure was bad, if, there, if it was an underexposed picture. I'm just going to go with the default and I'm going to just choose my own values. I think uh, this picture looks a bit boring. There's simply not enough light going on here. It seems like the sun is going down, but it's still very boring, this picture. So I'll just adjust the exposure to be a bit higher and then the gamma correction to get kind of like a dramatic flare to it. or to lighten it up so it becomes a bit misty. Uh, actually this picture will look good in, in both directions. Uh, it will create some kind of attract attractiveness to the, to the picture that it's either totally over gamma corrected or that it's looking very foggy. I think I'll just correct the gamma so it's 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 looking a bit more dramatic and perhaps then readjust the exposure probably and I'm just gonna click OK whenever I'm heavy. Heavy? Heavy is that some kind of word for heavy? Heavy but happy. Heavy, heavy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna click undo just to check out what was it before and what is it now. I'm the oh this is just really nice and you can just try adjusting the levels as well if you wanted to but I'm not gonna do that I'm exposure is fine with me I'm not gonna tell anything about curves not 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 for this time okay I'm gonna not save this um, and I'm just gonna open up my next file and bridge uh, overexposed see here we got a picture you cannot really fix this one 
it's really, really overexposed. But let's just check out image adjustment exposure. And here you can just, okay, since it's, since it's overexposed, you might say, okay, then we need to minus it. Then we need to darken it. Uh, but really these minus values are not always so great. So you see it becomes very gray. So perhaps it's not the exposure value, but instead the gamma correction you need to readjust. It may make this picture look somewhat more interesting. Um, but this picture really has some values of, that has some, some neutral values which are permanently lost. You cannot fix this. So it would be something dramatic you were searching for with this picture. Not anything that's similar to fixing, fixing the picture. Not gonna happen. Okay, so I'm gonna click OK, close this down. What I was trying to tell is, if the picture is totally overexposed or underexposed, it's gonna be impossible to fix. Or at least it's gonna take very long time to fix. So I'm gonna open up my bridge again. I'm just gonna click this underexposed picture and show that this actually is more possible to, to fix with exposure. I'm just gonna try saying we need some plus value. We need some more value inside of this. And that was too much, so I'm just gonna use this plus one setting and just start adjusting it. And you'll notice it will say custom the minute I start adjusting it. And uh, this picture might have looked actually very nice. Oh, I'm just going to set the offset value actually a bit lower. And here it actually works well with some offset value creating some dramatic effect. In general, it always works bad if you're adjusting the offset value to a plus value. So adding a bit of darkness effect with the offset and okay so we're actually making it look a bit more interesting um, perhaps that's more like it and this will be nice if it was not for the fact that someone had already been editing this picture if we zoom in You'll see that someone has already tried to do some editing. There's some weird light coming out here. And no, it's not from the light tower. And okay, there's some weird light right here. And also, especially right here, there's some weird light. So it's 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 evidence that someone had already been trying to edit this picture, especially here. You see it. There's um, some weird stuff going on. This is a fence. It's not a white wall. It's right here. Uh, you should be able to see through it. Okay. So you can fix some pictures, other pictures cannot be fixed by using exposure. Okay. Next one, gonna be hue saturation. And this is just to show some simple stuff in hue saturation, image adjustments, hue saturation. And here you can just change whatever color you got inside the face of this person. Uh, by adjusting the hue, you can also turn up the value, crank it up a bit with saturation, gonna make it look a bit more violent. Watch out, you don't overdo it, it's gonna look unnatural if you overdo it with saturation. Um, and yeah. It will work on pictures that only have one color. What happens if there's more colors in this picture? I'm just gonna close this one again and go into bridge and open up this one. Let's check it out. See if I try doing it with this picture, just gonna say hue saturation and change the hue. You'll notice that every color inside the picture changes, which was not the original idea. But if you just wanted some colors to change inside her face, there is the options of changing red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, and so on. I'm not gonna do that right now. Instead, with this picture, I'm gonna jump into image adjustment, vibrance. In instead of hue saturation, where you can actually change the color from being one color to another, inside of vibrance, you can adjust the midtones to become more vibrant. You can also crank up the, the saturation, so there's more coloring inside of the picture in general inside the 
the light tones and the dark tones. And you, if you if you were looking at it very uh, simple in a very simple fashion, vibrance would be the mid tone handle for colors and saturation would be kind of like light dark light darkness um, colors. I'll crank up the saturation a bit just to create a bit more life inside the picture. Give some 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 movement to the color so they don't look uh, vague and then change the vibrance so it just looks somewhat more more lively lively what the <laughs> yeah okay let's let's stick with that lively uh okay so this was before and this is after see there's somewhat more life to this picture somewhat more spark to this picture i'm gonna close this down you could save it if you want. I don't want to. And okay, I'm just gonna choose my selections, color balance. Um, uh, really, I'm just gonna give you a quick introduction to the quick selection tool. I really don't wanna be messing around with selections. It's just to show you how you can use color balance. So I'm gonna select this guy's shirt with my quick selection tool the one that students are using all the time. And I'm gonna try if I can hit some parts of this area out here without getting the background as part of it. And I did get the background, so I'm gonna hold down Alt to remove. And yeah, you don't need to hold down Shift to add because the quick selection tool is automatically set to add if you hold down your mouse button. Okay, I think this is fine. This is fine. I'm just gonna afterwards uh, start changing the color so i go to color balance and i'll start start adding some color to to this shirt perhaps actually you want to lighten the the or darken the shirt first so i go to image adjustment levels i'm gonna say i want some darkness in here that will actually make it easier to add coloring afterwards And it will also create somewhat more life inside of his shirt. But perhaps you just wanted it white, but I'm just gonna not want it white. Um, you see, these edges right here will become messy. I'm just gonna click undo. And then before committing the levels actions, I'm gonna click select, modify, feather, and I'm gonna take 10 pixels feathering. Then I'm going to use levels again, image adjustment levels, which will make the transition right here much better. Okay. I'm going to click undo to go back to my selection. I'm still going to use this selection right here, which was made using the quick selection tool. I soften up the edges of the selection with the select modify feather do not do it more than once because adding a feather value once and then again will add a feather value to the ex to the existing feather value making it become much more feathery <laughs> so you need to if you're unhappy with the feather value you select it you need to click undo till before the feather value was committed Okay, so I'm going to change that with this with color balance. Color, color balance is in adjustments, image adjustments, color balance. And now here we can see this is blue. So it's, if I want to even make it more blue, we can do that in color balance. We could also change it towards another color. Perhaps I want it to be kind of like turkey. Tur tur turkey, tur turkey. Yeah, I want him to be fresh. Uh, this is the midtones we're adjusting. We can go to the shadows and adjust them as we want. We do not want to remove the preserved luminosity um, because that's gonna make the coloring look bad. Bad, bad, bad. Okay, so, and we're gonna change the highlights as well. It's too much, too much, too much. Yeah, I think I like that. So that's by using color balance on an area of the person. You can save that. I don't care. 
Okay, so I actually think I've said enough right now. Um, you can just ignore the remaining two files in your in your folder called adjustments because we'll be going through extract extractions and montage when we get to next Photoshop lesson. That's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed some Photoshop. Remember to drink your coffee. I definitely want a cigarette right now. See ya.